If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this special episode Ooh, special. of Mind Pump, for the first 48 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. Adam starts off by uh, doubling down on his NFL versus soccer. <laughs> did you really put that in the fucking notes? We only talked about like two minutes. All right, I support this. Bro, oh, I can't God. even handle all the fucking hate mail I'm getting oh, right now, dude. It's hilarious. My, half hey, my man. DMs are shit talking, and then the forum is just flooded. Everybody wants to take oh, a shot. It's hilarious. It's, it's fucking, fine. We also, they're all fuck like, you, soccer. Trying to heal oh their, their, their fake injuries. We also, oh my God. <laughs> we also mentioned Adam's CD fire sale. He likes using the show to sell his own personal <laughs> stuff. It's DVD. Some t- DVD, my bad. <laughs> to, 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 to sell his personal stuff. Uh, we talk about the crazy housing prices in the Bay Area, the connection or the potential connection between sunglasses and skin cancer. Hmm. That's right. Looking cool may Say not be good for you. Uh, we talk about skinny dipped almonds. This is one of our new sponsors. Now, these are super pumped, delicious. Uh, it's like a dessert, amazingly good. But they're actually relatively healthy. Uh, we also have a code for you. If you go to skinnydipped.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, you'll get 20% off a bag of the almonds. Try these. You will not regret it. I mentioned a new documentary I just watched on Amazon Prime called Fasting. It's really good. Justin reveals his new diet. Ooh. Yeah, listen to this episode. Find out what kind of a diet Justin is doing. Is it an all, all cheese, cheese diet? Cheese. We don't you know. You're going to say that, you asshole. <laughs> we don't know. Damn uh, it. This contest is cheddar. getting crazy. Adam's trying to keep up. Hurt his back. <laughs> he deadlifted 135, pulled his back a little bit, so now he's got to kind of back Pray up. Pray for him. Yeah. Am I considered the behind, Am I the dark horse in this one, yeah. or are you considered the lead horse am in this? I, I don't it? know. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> is there, there already like pole yeah. positions? I'm here? not going to give you that motivation. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the dark horse motivation, that's a strong one. No, you're in the lead, bro. Yeah, you're, uh, you're winning. Uh, and then Adam talked about using Organifi's turmeric in high doses to reduce the inflammation from his back pull. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump, you'll get a fat 20% off. Then we get into the questions. Uh, The first question was, what should you do when you hit a plateau and simply cannot gain muscle or even strength anymore? We actually give out a secret tip. Mm -hmm. Secret. You got to listen to this episode to hear it. Next question was, uh, we've had different doctors on the show, all very smart. One of them was Dr. Terry Walls, and she advocates eating six to eight servings of vegetables a day. We've also had Dr. Sean Baker on the show, also another smart guy, who says, don't eat any vegetables at all and just eat meat. Uh, When it comes to eating vegetables, how are we supposed to figure out what is right for our individual bodies? Mm. The next question was, what are alternatives to amphetamines to help the younger generation focus more? Exercise. Yeah, beatings, exercise, yeah. one of those, <laughs> something like beatings that. Beatings first. Just kidding. Oh. And the final question was, what are some of our top items that we have on our bucket lists? Only one of us has interesting answers. The other two, <laughs> kind of boring. Bucket lists are for the birds. <laughs> Somebody obviously wanted to answer this question. You should have given us a heads up. Yeah, no. <laughs> I enjoy life right now. Yeah. I How do, about that? I do want to mention that this month... Uh, this has got to be our most successful promotion ever yeah. by far. Oh, it's yeah. killing it. Maps Anabolic half off all month long. So we took the price, cut it in half. It's under $60. Maps Anabolic's the program that started it all. It's excellent for muscle building. It's excellent for strength. And it's fantastic. One of the ways I really like to use it is speeding up people's metabolism. When people come mm. to me with slow metabolism. This is the program I always recommend to them. Yes, this is good for men and women. Everybody. Everybody. 50% off all month long. We also have bundles. This is where we take multiple MAPS programs and we put them together and combine them for particular goals. For example, we have a Fit Mom bundle. We have a Businessman bundle. Uh, And then we have our most popular bundle, which is our Super Bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. You can find all these bundles and the 50% off MAPS Anabolic at mindpumpmedia.com. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Oh, yeah. Give Finally. them away. Give them away, Doug. Yeah, we had 12 reviews. We're giving out four shirts. Ooh, that's one of the worst. Yeah, this is people huh? don't know how to leave reviews anymore. Oh. Yeah, it's yeah. all right. Yeah. They don't all right. care about us, I guess, huh? <laughs> I guess. Huh? You guys don't care? <laughs> so the winners are R.E.T. Anastasia Trotter, Pantera 3465, yeah. and... 
our favorite butt munch 2012. Oh, uh, oh good old butt munch. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> All of you are winners. So send the name I just Do read Lord's to work. <laughs> iTunes <laughs> at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Justin's that, old boyfriend. That's, right? an, yeah. 80, that's, that's an 80s baby. Hey, for he sure. tried hard. <laughs> dance, dance, dance. Shake it. Shake your booty. Did you guys have a good weekend or what? Yeah, man. It was good. I took my kids to this like Lego convention in uh, Santa Clara. Lego? Talk about a nerd herd. Wait, le- <laughs> <laughs> what? You- it was awesome though. Yeah, wait, wait, Lego convention. Yeah, dude. Like they're serious about their fucking Legos. Did they Let have all the? Did they have all the uh, like the mechanical? What are they called? What yeah, they- robotic, Lego technical. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. They had um, this elaborate like dioramas where oh my god, there was this one where it had like layers. So. You know, you know those kind of maps that are like um, that they, they have like actual texture to them. What are those called? Like topographical? Or, oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're called uh, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. But anyway, so there was like layers, like fuck, like 25 like bricks deep, where like they would just go up and down, and it just made. The, it's hard to describe, dude. It's like a whole alien terrain that they created. Dude, you were in fucking heaven. I know it was awesome. Where, <laughs> where is this at? This was at the uh, Santa Clara convention where you had your show that one time. Oh, you know what I meant to tell you? You know who's coming to, to San Jose and is, what's the band, uh, Greta Van Fleet? Oh, yeah. You know, they're Great here. band, yeah. Yeah, you know, they're coming here. They're coming oh, to I got to see that. Right here at Civic Center, too. Hell yeah. Remind, okay. remind, if you look it up and get the dates, because I saw the dates are coming the next month or two, remind me and then we'll get some tickets. I'm down, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, man. I'll That's go. some good new rock. Dude, here's the thing with those Lego conventions, robotics, because, because okay, so this weekend was my son's birthday, and he turned 13, which is a big, All that's right. a big birthday, right? He's a oh, teenager yeah. now. He's such a good kid. Oh, I didn't think kid about that. That's right. That is. I was like, why is that a big birthday? Oh, it's it's a not big a big deal. birthday. Turns into a teenager. Uh, you but you're right. You're a little, like mustache. You're a oh, and everything. Dude, you're an official teenager. Bro, that was he's, a big yeah, deal. When that he's happens. got the little dark. Yeah. The little dark fuzz is getting dark now. Happy his, birthday yeah, his, to his, me. His, his voice is have all you fucked ta- up. Have you taught him how to fill it in with mascara so it looks fuller? No, man. I'm gonna have him shave it pretty soon. Dude, I use dirt. Yeah, bro. That's the doing that. That's the trick. No, I didn't. What? What? You didn't do that? You did the dirty Sanchez to yourself? Yeah, because like. I had peach fuzz a bit, and I was trying to like even it out, so I put dirt on there, thinking oh I, I was cool when what I was you, a kid. What, like nobody could tell. <laughs> no. Yeah, I have no idea you what see, I was hey, doing. I'm just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody knew. Like his friends are looking at him, like, "Wow, he's got a like, full wow, beard. cool. Like, that did, yeah. that doesn't look like dirt. Yeah. It, it looked. Every cool. school had like the kid, right? Everyone had one kid who just like hit puberty like ten years earlier or some Dude, shit, full yeah. on beard in like Dude, seventh I had, grade. I had that was my friend Dusty. I had a full on bush. I think by the time I was thirteen. But anyway, so wow. did my, you really? Yeah, I did. Wow, I was the first one among all my. You really have an age. Anybody tell you prove it? Huh? Oh yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah, and uh-huh. you're just like, Poink. yeah. I was like, here, check it out. Yeah. So anyway, oh my I'm gonna god, make it rain. You just brought back some fucking. Remember, prove it. Yeah, you yeah. remember? Remember kids Talk. plucking their pubes? So hairs? gross. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's that's so disgusting. Yeah, we just went way down the. Yeah, hole that's too far. On that one. But, I do remember, but that, that's though. what you do. Yeah. It's, it was a thing. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it really happened because it's cool. Yeah, because you're cool. Well, I remember. And then boy, when you're older, boys, you imagine, you imagine doing that when you're an adult. That's so gross. Hey, bro, open your hand for a second. What are you putting in my hand? Uh, Pubes. Like, oh wow! Just You're want really to show you, a force. Just want to show you that I have some. Yeah. See why? Yes. <laughs> why? Why is that like a universal? Prove thing? it. I mean, we we grew up across way far away from each other. It's but a rite yet, of passage. It's like a. Is it? It's a rite of. You know what be. it is? There's there's rite of passages that culturally have happened in you know all kinds of cultures, and for guys we really don't have one anymore. We don't go hunting. We don't do whatever. Yeah. Girls get their period. What do guys get? Yeah, you know we, what I'm saying? We get pubes. Yeah, we get a boner and pubes. Basically, yeah. is what yeah. happens. So. Anyway, so anyways, his birthday, I got him a, a new computer because he loves gaming and shit like that. And you know, you were talking about the Lego convention. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was, you know, I was talking about it, and he's really into it, and his friends are all into it, and that's what kids are into nowadays, right? And I was asking, him, like, so who's the best among you and your friends? And mm. he's like, well, me and this other kid, we're, we're the best ones. So I'm like, are you just saying that to sound cool, or you're? He's like, no, I'm, I'm actually the. I really <laughs> I'm really am. a badass dad. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. I said, you know, I heard I'm that the real deal. I'm like, I heard. Kids make can make a lot of money gaming. Like there's leagues and shit. And my son goes, Oh yeah. He goes, Oh, he goes, You have no idea. So he shows me this kid who made eight million dollars last year in these tournaments and shit, getting sponsored by these computer companies and headphone companies and video game companies. Eight million dollars. Dude, that's they, the they athlete make even more of today. Than that. I mean, if you if you really get into like the 
the professional gaming league and you look up like some of the top performers in there, they make so much fucking money. They make more money than like a lot of the uh, like soccer players and and you know the the top players in the world. They, <laughs> you brought up soccer again, dude. What did you, you guys are oh trying hard. God, people, get, people get so bro. Hurt. You got you got uh, Adam. You got ripped. Oh, I did. I did. I offended. I, uh, I offended. So I, it was all in fun, you know. Well, like, let me ask you again. That's protective. Are you going to go back on your statement of saying that the NFL is going to surpass soccer one day? I <laughs> actually <laughs> still I still stand by that. Oh I do. I love it. Oh I do. God. I do. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have said if I didn't believe it. Like I. And I know people think because of the if that ever happens, well, let me take, let me explain. you will be like the god of because that's such a it's, uh, well. Here's here's the odds are so against here's them. where people here's what where people aren't thinking. Okay, I and I've said this on the show before. <laughs> this is why you're all dumb. <laughs> yeah, this is why you guys ready? are this is why you guys are silly right here. If you really think that the the NFL as an organization is going to go away because of what everything that's happening, it's not going to just disappear. It'll pivot. Yeah. And what I evolve. I told you what I think is going to be the future of what, how we watch sports is we're going to have these AIs that are going to look like humans that are going to be replicated just like probably the real humans that can play the sport, and they'll fucking kill each other. They'll blow each. We'll hit each other so hard they'll blow up, and we'll see all this. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be something that I don't it, think it'll be football. I think if that happens, it'll still be the NFL though. It'll be like it'll, it'll be, be the, football with guns or, or you know, whatever or swords, or whatever. <laughs> you know, maybe it's a blend of the you know like what your son's doing with the NFL or yeah. whatever. But my point is that I I think it's it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Dude, where speaking of which, I saw uh, videos the other day of dude. Russia has the craziest like MMA type shit I've ever seen in my life. Really? No, there, no rules? No, no. They had one where guys were wearing armor and they were fighting with... <laughs> Are you shitting? Like no. medieval, like like battling? Swear to God. No. Swear to God, dude. Well, I mean, stick fighting. But remember, that. remember Tate? That's what Tate started with. Oh, uh, yeah. Our oh, boy Tate. Like, Eskrima? Yeah. yeah. What was it? What was it called? Eskrima. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know the name yeah, of it. Because yeah. I've, seen, fight, I've which is, seen actual MMA fights like in, in like a field... Where those it, are in Russia too. Yeah, where like people just like it was no holds bar, but they didn't have weapons, but they all fought like MMA style without any boundaries. Dude, Russians are crazy. crazy. Russians are crazy. I saw the one where they had weapons. They literally had weapons. They were blasting <laughs> each other. It's crazy. And then I saw one where it was a group. Damn. It was a group of it was two groups of like five. So it was like five against five, no holds barred fight. And you know what ends up happening with that? Like first it's one on one, but as soon as one guy knocks the other guy out, it starts to become like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna blast you know what I mean? We're right. gonna jump this other guy, and so the fight right. so like quickly on one, then quickly on devolves one. into like two guys fighting four guys. Oh my god, it's crazy! Like, like a Royal Rumble of MMA, dude. They're insane. It's absolutely insane. Anyway, oh, I want to see that. So I watched uh, the dumbest movie of all time, mm. also this weekend. Really? Yeah, the first Purge. Oh, yeah. that's in theater right now. Stupid. Oh, I so thought it, stupid. I thought it looked kind of cool. Dumb. Dumb? No, oh my God, it's dumb. Really? Oh, I walked out. It wasn't scary at all or any of that? God, it's so stupid. It's like- it's, Or did you? Did it have like political undertones that you didn't like? That's what it well, sounds like. Well, all of them when do. When you say stupid, I feel like- No, uh, stupid is in it, was, it wasn't made well. It, uh, it was like, it was violence for the sake of violence. It was just excessively- uh, yeah. You know when you watch a, like a scary movie that's trying too hard? Uh-huh. It was like that. It was just, it was dumb. And then did you guys watch the- The, 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 the first Purge? One. Yeah, the actual no. Purge. It was okay. No, I didn't you know? watch any of those series. I liked um, what was it? What was the other one with the creepy guy that that drove around on the uh, uh the the cycle? Saw, saw. Yeah. Did you like the first couple ones? All were good. thirteen of those. <laughs> I know, right? And then it just kept going, and you're like, I get it. You know, I, I know I saw that first. I saw that first one. Scared the shit out of me on that. Yeah, we didn't go back. Did and watch it really? It. Like the oh first my. couple were crazy. I was in the theater opening. You weekend. were an adult. It wasn't even that long ago. Yeah, of course. So. Fucking still scares me, You get me, really bro. scared, huh? Of course I do. How many times I got to admit that on the show? <laughs> I, this shit, I still, Wait, what do you do when you get scared? Fucking gives me, I don't know. Like my like, fucking asshole puckers up and it gives me anxiety <laughs> and my heart sweats. rate. And my heart races and I sweat. Yeah, it's like not fun watching Did movies. Did you watch a way. really scary movie when you were a kid or something that did that to you? Did no, you I think it's because I didn't. So I have like cousins uh, that were like exposed to it as little kids and, and watched. I never really watched scary movies as a kid growing up. And and then when I was introduced to it, I thought, well, this is stupid. This just gives me anxiety and <laughs> makes me sweaty. And like, that's why they're fun. No, that's not fun at all. Yeah. That's not a roller coaster to me. It's like yeah. I, I'll go to a, a fucking theme park if I want to feel like that. Like if I want to watch a movie, I want to relax. You know what I'm saying? I want to be entertained. I don't want to <laughs> be jumping out of my seat. But anyways, I was at Saw for the fir- for the opening weekend, the first one. Your girlfriend must have convinced you at the time. <sighs> I, you probably, because I'm sure I wasn't with a buddy of mine. Unless maybe you know what? Maybe it was my buddies. My buddies love to make me watch scary movies. Like if it's there's three of us, 
And if I'm the odd man out on a movie, like we, I, I'm not that much of a puss that I won't go watch it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, if I'm outnumbered here, we'll go, which is probably what happened. But we were in the theater for Saw, and it was sold out. Everybody was in there. And it was opening weekend, so you don't know any of the parts that are coming, you know. Because after a scary movie comes through, like people, you know, tend to ruin it yeah, for you. Be talk like, about oh, it. watch the one part, you oh, know, like yeah. it's like the Blair Witch Project. Yeah, Two right. Two people ruined that for me just about as I was going to go watch it. Right. Oh, so that. what's the real? Me? So <laughs> the part Thanks. where the uh, maybe I think one of the scariest moments in scary movie history, at least for me, because I haven't watched a lot, so you can argue this if you've watched a ton. But the part where. Um, he's walking around the apartment. It's pitch black, and he's using the camera. Oh yeah, that was to, brilliant. Oh my god! So the whole theater, every <gasps> every single time the camera flashes, oh, I love it. And then when it flashes, and you see the clown face, like the whole fucking theater scream like on on part right right with everybody just scream. Do you get nightmares? No, I don't get nightmares. Okay, just mm. you just don't like the anxiety while you're watching. Yeah, I just I, I mean I love to. I'm a huge movie buff. Anyone seen my my? By the way, I'm selling that. So I just put, I just found a new app. Selling Guess, what? Oh, I'm selling all my stuff, right? So we're moving soon. So I'm selling everything, and uh, my DVD collection. I have like between. Do people buy those? Still? I know. Is that a thing? Well, I mean, I'm like practically giving them away. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, these things I have. Well, <laughs> are you doing one com- blockbuster? Are you doing a commercial existence. on my pub right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me sell my shit real yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I <laughs> www yeah, yeah, yeah. forward slash my pub selling all my shit. It's a I, fire sale. I fa- you got, are you guys familiar with this app right here? I'm sure Enzo is. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's called Let Go. You guys heard of this? Oh uh, yeah, I've seen a commercial. It's like before. the. It's like um. It's kind of like Craigslist, but virtually, right? So what are you and, doing, like 50 cents each or something like that, a dollar each? Yeah, I want I would like a dollar each. You know, what, I, what I'm trying to do is sell the whole collection for 500 bucks, and there's well over 500 in there. I, I stopped counting at 500, right? So there's a bunch more. And there's like, I've got PlayStation, Xbox. I've got games games and movies that aren't even opened. Probably 50 stuff. Things Some that porn are, in yeah. there on accident. There's porn in there. Yeah. There's everything in there. It's a, yeah, it's a plethora of entertainment in there. So if... Uh, Anybody's looking for some DVDs. I'm selling the TVs. Everything's going, bro. Well, you're doing the whole thing. <laughs> Everything. The whole Everything's got to go. I told Katrina the only thing she's allowed to bring is the box spring. That's it. Everything else has got to go. Mm-hmm. Everything that we're starting. I like doing wow. it like that, too. Yeah, just, just a don't. clean break. Well, you know, when, when, I moved, when I sold my house and moved in with her, she had already had, like, all of her shit. And then I brought in all my stuff. So we have, like, a storage in the back. Our garage is full. We've got a spare room full of shit. We just Mix got smash. so much shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't want any of it. Have know. you decided to buy or to rent first? Rent, right? Are you going to keep the quad? So uh, No, I'm sell- <laughs> selling the quad. Wow. Selling the Camaro. I sold what? the Toyota. Selling the Camaro, the Camaro too? Camaro. Sell- well, the Camaro's the only thing. Ouch. Not, do not, not sell the Camaro. Don't, I, if someone gives me the right You've price. You've made money on that. Yeah, so if I, maybe, if I sell it, I made money. Oh, you mean it goes, they go up on average 8%. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, every time one of those things come up, fall off the road, you, those things go up. That's Especially, a sick-ass car, too. You never so, drive it, though. I know. That's the reason why. Yeah. And and we're, we're going to do this little, uh, you know, for six months, because I still- to buy over here in San Jose the house that I want, you know, you need a bajillion dollars. Yeah. So <laughs> they made up a new name for the number, yeah. the money you need. <laughs> yeah, it's way a, past. They the said it's a bajillion. Plex. It's yes. a bajillion dollars, right? So I'm gonna, I'm we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna lease for six. Uh, we're looking for a six month lease to kind of hold us over until I got a couple more bucks to go buy like a, a see real the, house. the the problem with buying in the Bay Area. It, it, obviously, always you're gonna speculate is the is the value of the property gonna go up or is it not gonna go up and Bay Area is just so expensive and so many people are coming here to work, especially in Silicon Valley. But the problem is when you buy a house here, a decent house is going to cost you over a million dollars. And I mean, when I say decent, I mean like a normal small family Livable. home. I'm not talking yeah. about like a, a nice house. Like a regular, no. like a regular home, a regular yeah. suburban home will cost you over a million dollars. So if you want something that's a little nicer, you're going to spend about 1.3, 1.4. That's that ties up so much of your money because you put a down payment on that. What is that? Three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yep. you've got so much money tied up, and it's not liquid unless you sell it. If the market goes down, you're fucked. The other op- the other option, if you want to be smart with it, because I've talked to a lot of, I have a lot of family members that are investors, and they're telling me like it's not smart. What they're saying is rather than tying up all your money in buy a property, two or three investment properties. Yeah, buy buy a few investment properties or buy two and then put some Which in this other market. Which we've discussed this, but you know, where Katrina and I are at with, you know, settling down and starting and Then there's a I know what you're going to say. So, yeah. mm-hmm. so my my theory and the reason why we're not jumping into a place right now. So I could jump into a place right now. But the problem is the place that I would jump in right now is around the range that you're talking about right now, which is that 1 to 1.2 and what I want's more like 1.5, 1.8. 
And the, and the reason why, like for me, the way I look at it with you know, when I tell Katrina is that, you know, whatever we buy, I want to make sure it's a house that we feel okay if we were in it for the next 10 to 15 years. Yeah. So is, that's why I'm in this limbo. Like I could just go get a house to get into a house, but I don't want to buy a house that I don't want to be in three years later. And yeah. if the market does dip in three to five years, uh, then I'm fucked, right? Mm. Whereas if I get something that I really like and I would be okay if we were stuck there for 10 or 15 years, which we know over the course of 20 years, real estate's always an incredible investment. I mean, the it may- Unless there's some disrupting technology, like 3D printed homes that just destroys the- <laughs> <laughs> You never know. It's no, common. you know, no. Even then, but I here. Here's the thing with that. You still, right? have, you still need space. Yeah, you yeah. need. You still need yeah. land. What's so expensive in the Bay Area is not so much the homes. The homes aren't that. It's the land. I mean, you're paying. 80 there's low supply. There's yeah, a, I mean, it, excuse me. Yeah, there's low supply and high demand. It's just yeah, that, you uh, buy you buy a house in in the Bay Area for 1.5, 1.8. You know, 1.2 of that is the fucking property. You know, mm-hmm. so the house is only really worth three, four hundred thousand dollars. Dude, there was a two or three million dollar house in Palo Alto. It's eight hundred square feet. They just bought it to tear it down. Yeah, and that's. How much they just spent on it? Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you're really playing for the the land over here and the location where we're at. So we're, you know, I'm in the middle of that right now. So I'll probably end up, and all of it's up in the air. It's like it, there is a possibility we may buy something really quick. I'm even I'm even looking into this area right here because Google's coming in. All the property that's that's going to get built or that is built or that is that's here is probably, probably going to go up. Yeah, I can't imagine yeah. Google dropping in here, and and you can see it if you drive down San Carlos, you can just see all these. The thing about California too that's crazy is that you know there's more people leaving than coming in though. That's mm-hmm. the other thing. Mm-hmm. There's more right there's like an exodus they're talking about in in the biggest city. San Francisco just lost There's this convention that goes there every year and I can't remember the name of I don't know if maybe Doug can find it. Maybe look up Doug uh convention uh leave San Francisco. I don't remember the name of it. But it's a big convention it goes every year. This is the first time they said we're not coming. Because of all of the safety concerns, because of the crime, the homelessness, and the exp- and how expensive it is. Oh, wow. So I don't know, man. It's weird for me because I feel like it's either going to keep getting more expensive or what we may see is this like what happened to, you know, because there's areas like Detroit. You know, Detroit used to be one of the best places to live in America when the, when the auto industry was exploding. Mm-hmm. But then the auto industry failed to be able to compete with, you know, Japanese cars and other cars. And a lot of that had to do with all the regulations and all that kind of stuff. And now Detroit is just, it's, it's, you know, they have like a quarter of the population they used to, and it's not a place, it's not a place you want to live. So I don't know, man. Well, I mean, I would hundred percent, if I was like a guy who wasn't trying to start a family and settle down like that, I would for sure investment properties. It's not even, it's a no brainer to me because like you said, I mean, when you're talking about 1.5, 1.8 million, you can buy some nice houses for 300 grand Mm -hmm. in other places. So Mm -hmm. you could have three fucking homes. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You could buy right away pretty much. I mean, you couldn't right away, but you would one after another be able to probably pick up a couple of properties. That's what's so enlightening how like it's not expensive to actually build the house. That's not the expensive part. No, it's the property. It's just the property. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's why I think even 3D printing won't destroy the housing market in an area like this. this. The area will continue to be desirable. There's still a ton of money. You here. know what I wonder might change. So it was a medical convention uh, that, that canceled. So you know what I what I think might change house prices because I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, okay, what could? Because and the reason why I was thinking about this, I, I actually posted an article in the forum about the cost of the taxi medallions in New York. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys saw that. I right? didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. So a taxi medallion, you have to have one. It allows you to, to be able to the own The value of it's dropped down to like It used to be worth over a million dollars. Yeah, that's like one. Now it's a hundred something. They don't even know because people haven't sold them in like a few years. And right. it's because Uber came in and completely- Who would even was, consider buying one? What are you buying the yeah, book? why? What are you buying? When you get the medallion? Yeah, I mean, no, I know I get what you're getting with the medallion, but I was like, if you're somebody who would even consider buying one right now- Nobody's going to buy one. Yeah, now. why? Nobody. Why? It makes yeah. no sense. That's what I'm saying. The, the value is probably zero, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. It and it's be because uh, it was an artificially inflated you know, market and it, because of you know, it was a monopoly, they only limited so many, and now here comes a disrupting technology that just destroyed that market because that market was propped up by- you know, other circumstances. Dude, it's well, so archaic. Remember when we were taking a taxi in stupid. LA compared to Uber? So it was d- like, they're, they're, and he's like giving us shit for not having cash. They destroyed themselves. Like, who yeah. are you? Yeah. yeah. So so when I think of the housing, the the cost of houses, and I think what would what could what could disrupt that industry, right? And I thought, okay, 3D printing, but then you're right about property, uh, like the actual size of the land and all that stuff. You know what I think might actually affect it quite a bit? Self driving cars. Because when self driving cars become the norm, you have to imagine for sure uh, traffic is going to become 
almost non-existent because most traffic is not the result of too many cars. It's the result of human error. And when cars can synchronize and move together, you can fit way more cars on the same road and find that there's no traffic whatsoever. And the fact that people will be able to work in their cars on the way to work, it'll make it much less of a stress. I feel like that may change the prices because people will just, they, you know, let's say the jobs are in San Jose. Someone's going to be like, well, cool, I'll, I'll just work two hours yeah, away. But what you're talking about right now is something that's going to take us 30 years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for that to complete. You like, think so? Oh, well, yeah. There's a lot I of mean, I mean, I agree with you, but by the time by the time San Jose's freeways are converted to self-driving cars and all those things like that, I mean, we're talking minimum 20 years. Mm. I mean, just to, just, just to build that out, what that would well, take. Well, you have to go through government. You know, because of the roads. Take, yeah, exactly. So that's what's going to be the the holdup for right. sure, right? Because all the regulations and shit. I feel like they may be they they may be something that because on the one hand they may not want to do it because there's all these lobbies, the special interests. But on the other hand, cities may want to do this because they may find that they're not able to get people to live there and to you know because of the cost. I, I think they will. I think, like I think they may they may actually make I a think lane. You're right, that, that that's the future. I do. I hundred. I would not disagree with that. But I really don't think that's going to I don't think that's going to affect the, the housing as much as we think yeah. it is. I think it's going to continue to to rise for a couple more years and then it'll plateau, maybe dip again. And so as long as you can ride it out mm. for 10 to 15 years like it, now if you were looking to like if I was looking to buy this is what I don't uh, I don't want a starter home right now right I already had my starter home yeah, I hear what you're I, saying. so I don't want to I'm with you yeah I don't want a starter home that I was that I was planning on trying yeah. to flip and sell in three to five years to upgrade to a bigger you want to live where you're going to live yeah. for a yeah, while that's, and that's what's taken so long for me to, to pull the trigger on all I'm this a, I'm with you I'm the, yeah. that's why I'm not going to buy something that I'm going to live in if I'm going to buy anything it'll be investments mm -hmm. and I'm going to wait like because I feel like in two three years I'll be able to get more uh, more what I want yeah. I mean, and remember, I owned a nice house yeah. Yeah. not that long ago. You know, it's I'm not just, mine I'm now. I'm just going to demo my house and start over. Did yeah. you? Did yeah. you? Did you? Let, I love my. Property. Did you give her all of that? Did, I didn't. I don't remember if you told me that or not. No, we. She. she I mean, she has the house. Yeah, she, yeah, she but lives she had it. to pay me out. But obviously, I got the short end of the stick on that because of the you know the value of the homes goes up quite a bit. Right. And I'm not especially right now. Well, here's your a, home's probably worth well over a million. It's over a million now. Yeah. It's probably one point one one point. Here's the thing with that. It's when you're in a situation where you have children and you want the best for your kids. Right. It's a no-brainer. Here's the deal. Divorce is tough to go through to begin with. They're already going to move because now they're going to live with me half the time. So that's already a big move. I'm not going to also force them to move out of the house that they were born in and grew up in because of this whole thing. So I, you know, I want to make sure we work together as well as possible for the benefit of the children. If that means that she, on some ends, gets... You know, a better deal. That's fine. On the other ends, I get a better deal too. I mean, she's extremely flexible when we travel a lot and stuff like that, and she does a lot of the planning when it comes apart. So I'm not like bitter. I know I joke around about it, but I'm not bitter. Yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, yeah. so I read a uh, some really cool articles this weekend that I want to share on the show. Um, here's a fascinating one. So there's a theory. This one really blew me away. There's this theory that's circulating that wearing sunglasses may actually increase your risk for skin cancer. Mm -hmm. Wearing sunglasses. Yes. So when the UV rays Explain. hit your eye, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> when the UV rays hit your eyes, there is a compound that's released by the brain, and I can't remember what it's called. I'll look it up. That prepares your skin to deal with the potential damaging effects of UV, UV rays. But when you wear sunglasses, mm. your brain thinks it's dark. It's giving you a mixed signal. So your skin is less prepared to deal with the potential damage what? of the sun. How do we finally put this together? What a trip. It's a well, this is a theory. It's not proven yet, but oh, okay. it, but it you know what? I would bet my money that that, that there's probably something to that, right? Hmm. Cuz we know what happens Well, it makes your, it makes sense. We know what happens with your ability to sleep just because you've been exposed it's to It's like a sensor. I mean, your mm -hmm. eyes will gauge, you know, what kind of intensity is mm -hmm. out there, so that that does make logical sense. It's very strange. Okay, it's uh so then, melanocytes like, stimulating blind, blind people got to be fucked then, right? How's that work then? Uh, that you know what's funny about that? Blind people have I can't remember the name of the, the what, what's it called when they, it's it like inside your nose and your ears? Like I remember Ben Greenfield talking. Oh, about there's this light sensors the light in your sensors. nose and your ear. Yeah. yeah, but with blind people, they have this. A lot of them suffer this condition where they it's hard for them to fall asleep and, and wake up at at consistent times because their their brain isn't perceiving, you know, the the, the that it's day, daytime or nighttime. Yeah, yeah. But no, I think that's a fascinating theory, and I I would bet money that there may be some truth to that because, you know. I, for sure, do you think your brain, knowing it's daytime, is going to cause reactions in the body to prepare it for the fact that it's daytime? Or when it's dark, prepare your... Because we know this, if you 
if you don't have light coming through your eyes, it's like, let's say you wear blue blockers, right? Your brain prepares itself to release melatonin and get you to go to sleep. We know mm-hmm. that for mm-hmm. a fact. So wouldn't the opposite also? <clears throat> I, got some, I got something made. you better prepare for. You. En- Enzo. I prepare for. <laughs> no, Enzo better prepare, prepare for him getting his ass whooped for <laughs> oh. eating all of our new sponsors. Dude, fucking, those things are so good. I can't blame you, Enzo. I was so excited. This is probably That's one of my, my, snack of my favorite choice. new sponsors that we just got. And... I was so excited they shipped over a box, a ton of them. Doug's like, yeah, yeah, they all skinny, came in. Skinny, skinny dipped. I go to look inside, and this little motherfucker has eaten like almost all the almonds over there. <laughs> I know. You know what's funny? Is, and he went and had to go buy a bunch of them for, to replace them. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of companies will send us stuff thinking that we're going to try it and like it. Yeah, and yeah, 99.9% yeah. of the time, happens. we don't like it. Never right. happens. We're just like, whatever. But- it has to blow our mind. But we're willing to try. We'll try it. If it blows our mind, then we'll talk about it and, and maybe we'll work with you. Well, these are so good. Yeah. And they're not bad for you. No, no. Well, yeah. I mean, it's low on the sugar. I mean, there's some sugar in it, but it's like, oh well, my it's God. Chocolate. But it's chocolate and, yeah. and it's, oh my God, they're just, they're just the so tasty. This is a nice little snack. Oh no, my God. it's so, it's smart. It's simple what they did. Yeah. I mean, all all they really did was instead of, because anyone, everyone's had like chocolate covered almonds. It's not like revolutionary. Like it's not yeah. like the first time. There's just not there. a lot of chocolate. It's yeah, just it's, enough. It's yeah, just, it's just a enough. very thin coat. So you kind of get that. So it gives you this kind of sweet, which for someone like me, who has been addicted to sugar his entire life and it took forever for me to kind of wing myself. All, and when I have like these moments where like, oh, that sounds really good. For example, we were at the movies last night. You know, and again, with association, like my brain says like, oh, Mike and Ike sounds so good right now, you know, <laughs> but I know like that would just give me, fuck my stomach up later on and I know I regret it. So you it. didn't have them? No. So I had the skinny dips instead. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, you know, Katrina brought it in her purse and there, you know, s- smuggled it into the theater. Still yeah. feels like you're smuggling whenever you go to the movies. Dude, with they it. don't check that anymore. They you don't. Know? Like I've, they I've, don't. I've I come to that with... conclusion too. They don't give a shit. I, no. I've gone in with sandwiches. Yeah. 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 You know I, mean? <laughs> I came in with a big old soda. One now, time. part of that might be because we're older big men too. And that's these, what I think. Uh, and the young, yeah. Because I was going to say, I remember as a kid, I used to get caught up all the time with that shit, yeah. but that's because of some skinny little kid walk through and then somebody else. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Especially the way I walk when right. I have a when I have a thing I'm not supposed to have. Yeah, I walk right I, by. Exactly. Yeah. I, I put Just, a look on my face. I, I look at him. Yeah, Tell me like, I can't have my sandwich. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey man, how's it going? Yeah, I actually have. I'll fucking you eat you for my. Sandwich. But they are they are really really good and they are relatively low sugar for something like that. So they they did a pretty good. No, job. I have to say it's one of my favorite sponsors that we we've picked which up. Which one did you have? The peanut butter one? Or I've the, had them all now, man. No, the no but which one did you bring? Favorite. Oh, so no, I have the coffee one. I like the coffee one. Super good. Yes. Have I tried that? I haven't tried that yet. Everyone, Purposefully, we didn't give you any on yeah, purpose. You assholes. Yeah. No, they well, have, no, now, well, we'll get, now that the contest started, you can have them all you want. <laughs> I, I've had them. Yeah, I've had them all. The, my least favorite, although they're still good, are the raspberry one because I thought that's kind of a that's different. And they, the, the secret is to put them in the refrigerator. If you guys haven't figured out already, you put them in the refrigerator. They're really, really good cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I like them all. I mean, the peanut yeah. butter one and the coffee ones. I mean, they're like, yeah. and they did what they did was really smart that I like about it. And I was telling you guys this before we got on air is. Even if you went crazy, right, and you ate the whole thing, they, they like Enzo did. They yeah, they package them into. I think I want to say it's about five hundred or six hundred calories. So it's not like eating a whole bag of chips or a whole pint of ice cream or a whole box of candy that most people could do. Even if you could go in on them, at least your the damage that you're doing from them it's is, not bad. Is yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, for me, five six hundred calories is not like the end of the world. I man. do think you're right, though. I think that the kids are supposed to stop us, but they're scared. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's so. Right. You, yeah. you have you guys ever Maybe. had a front desk person at one of your gyms work there and? not say something to someone because they're intimidated and have them walk by. You ever seen that? Yeah, 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 of course. Oh, I did that. I saw that once where <laughs> my friend desk, there was this dude just like, excuse me, sir. And he just kept walking. And then he, he let him because the guy looked kind of intimidating. And then of course I went and confronted him and everything. There was a big old deal about it. But, <laughs> yeah. but it is, you can, a lot of times just walk in. Oh yeah, and people yeah, yeah. won't say shit. No, you're right. Like, you, I know where I'm going. If you act like you own the place, it's when you walk in and you look all lost or confused, we tried or you're not sure that. or guilty. Where did we try doing that? We got stopped. We almost made oh, it. Oh, it was at the, the uh, wine barbecue convention? festival. It they, was the wine thing. Yeah, right? across from Paleo Effects. What, what did we do this? <laughs> oh, we tried right. so hard to get in. Oh my god, <laughs> Adam like, tried every so angle. hard. It Adam's was, getting the security you, guys. Hey, to dude, you really, you really did a good job. You tried so hard. Didn't you guys feel confident? I felt you were going to get it. I thought for sure. Yeah, we were close. 
close. Yeah. And I mean, we, we convinced at least those one were or like two people. Two hundred dollar tickets a piece that we almost walked through. That <laughs> we just a, who stopped us? There's this old salty dog. He that's was, he's just like nah, yeah. No. Those are the people. The you, Patriot. Yeah. If you ever see an old man working at yeah. the movies, yeah. for sure he'll stop your ass. Yeah. He's he don't like, give a he's, fuck. He's Nobody just, gets by on my watch. He was hired just to ruin kids' days. That's what he was hired for. We need yeah. a guy who's yeah. worried, willing to ruin kids' days right here. This yeah. guy's perfect for that. Dude, you guys got to watch. Not a pushover. The, another. I found another fasting documentary on. Amazon Prime. It's literally called Fasting. Really fucking good. Dr. Walter Longo's on there. There's a couple things I don't like about it that that they kind of highlighted people's weight loss through fasting, which, you oh, know, yeah. Jessica and I were watching it and we we're both cringing like, oh, don't set this message out because you're just going to get a bunch of people, who, you know, anorexic or whatever. But they were going over some of the science. One of the scientists on there uh, brought something up and I did some more of my research and I found that it seems to be true. Some of this seems to be true. So you know how when you diet, when people cut their calories and they do it for a long enough period of time, they get metabolic adaptations or metabolism slow down, right? We talk about this all the time on the show. Fasting does that to a far lesser degree. Hmm. So instead of you know, just going low calories all the time, if people intermittently fast and then that ends up resulting in less calories, the metabolic adaptations, the, slow metabolic, or the, the slower metabolism that you may get from that, is much f- uh, lower with the fasting. And they theorize it's because when you are have no food, your body wants to burn. When you're eating food, it wants to store. When you're eating too little, it kind of mixes those signals up a little bit. So it's better to like eat in, in a, in a time-restricted like a fashion. a signal. This is you know, the priority That's right the now. theory, but I thought that was really hmm. fascinating because you know I, I would think that it would cause the same kind of... And I'm assuming, I would assume if you did a lot of fasting, that would end up happening, right? If you overdid it. But pretty interesting. That is really interesting because it makes me think about like prepping for a show and if it would be a smarter strategy than instead have like high calorie days and yeah. then have like no, and then no food. Fast, yeah, right? literally like we're not going to eat this day like a day off of. I would I see, and that's where I'm conflicted. Like even like 500 calories more. Like, what would a high day look like? Well, a high- well, you just average it out, right? Yeah. So you would look at the whole. So let's say you had a female athlete or whatever eating 2,000 calories a day. And that was their contest prep, let's just say, right? So that's seven, that's 14,000 calories for the whole week. Mm. I wonder if instead of, and let's say, let's just imagine that that puts her at a 750 calorie deficit every day. Rather than doing 2,000 calories a day, maybe take those 14,000 calories and do it over six days and then make one day no food. Right. I see. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that, and you take those 2,000 calories and add it to the other days or something mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. right? It'd be, it'd be interesting to see the, if they're like, the, I would love to see a study like mm-hmm. that comparing yeah. two groups That'd like going, yeah, going. The go- only thing that bothers me about even talking about this on our show yeah, I know. Yeah, is you get people that'll, yeah, want to adopt it for fat loss. And here's the thing that scientists don't understand because I hear these guys talking on this, on this, in, this, uh, doctor documentary and and jessica and i are just cringing at some of the stuff they're saying not because what they're saying is wrong but because how people will receive it i've trained so many look we've trained so many people we know well i already feel like it even on since our show has been going now for three and a half years or whatever and we came out at the very beginning talking about all the pros of fasting now i feel like i want to reverse my stance and tell everybody to stop it's it's turning into a fad just like we thought it would And everybody, I, I hear people all the time. Like I hear people at the hair salon; they'll be cutting hair, and I hear girls two, you know, two salons over. I two. just fast for forty eight hours. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, ready for oh, the beach. what are you doing for your diet right now? Like, oh, I'm doing you know intermittent fasting right now. Like, ever that's like well, everyone because because it, it becomes the thing. It's the only thing, you know. And they, and they overdo it. And and for back when we started, like nobody was doing it. So that's why we brought it up so much, and we tried to promote the benefits the, of it. The but problem then it just got away. The problem is, is that starving yourself has been rebranded now as fasting. That's what it is, literally. Because when, when I first became a trainer, people who just didn't eat to lose weight, we used to say, oh, you're starving yourself and or right. that's a potential eating disorder or bad relationship to food. Now, because we call it intermittent fasting because we see all the health benefits of doing it, People think like, oh, this is cool. This is just what I'm going to do. It's more socially acceptable. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, it wasn't socially acceptable for you to say, if someone came up to you and said, hey, how are you losing weight? Oh, I just, I don't eat on Tuesdays. People are like, oh my God, that's terrible. Yeah. It's socially acceptable now to say, oh, for weight loss, I fast. You know, I just don't eat. I still think that's a terrible approach. I think it's a terrible approach to use it for weight loss. I think it's a terrible approach to use any diet like that for mm-hmm. weight loss instead of just eating in a way that's good for your body and the weight loss happening. Now, by terrible, too, I think you what you mean for, as the majority, right? I think it's terrible for the majority, although I think that it, it can actually be a great thing, right? There, there is, you there have is, to have a good 
right. You have solid to get, foundation. You got to have a good relationship with food first. Like of that's, course. I feel like there's there's levels to doing yeah. something like this. And you can I, get stuck there. I mean, it's just like IFYM, like where we had a problem there. It's like people right. just get stuck into this one like you know operating mode, and then that's that's what they're going to stay with for long term. But it doesn't. It's not going to benefit. You have to be flexible, weave in and out, and you have to use these tools. You know, like uh, sparingly, like use them when when it's appropriate. There's two. There's two major eating. I guess dysfunctions that I see that come from people who abuse fasting. One of them is I don't eat, and then when I eat, I binge or eat a bunch of shitty food. Right, that's one where I see people try to correct, like they that they ate a bunch of crap by fasting, and then they justify it, and so it's like on or off, on or off, and it's extreme. That's one. Then the other one is the obvious one, which is people who just fast just far too often, and then when they do eat, they still eat too little. Right. And so they just end up constantly in this crazy deficit. Yeah. And those are the two problems. But aside from that, if you have a good relationship to food, um, it's fascinating to me. And it just makes it just makes so much sense when you think of it from an evolutionary standpoint, right? If you're not eating anything, your body is in burn. And this is what the scientist said. You're either burning or storing. You're not doing both. He's like, you're either, your body's either trying to store or it's trying to burn. Those are the two kind of operating systems. Just like when you're trying, and obviously sometimes one's happening, the other one's happening. Many times it's balanced, so you end up, you know, kind of the same. But it makes perfect sense. And eating constantly all the time is kind of confusing that a little bit. And, and like he said, the, the research shows that ends up slowing down the metabolism. There was a mouse study that was just published. And again, this is with mice, but, you know, many times this points scientists in a direction with humans. A 24-hour fast in mice sped up their metabolism, and they think the reason why it sped it up is because it stimulated stem cells mm. that end up turning into new cells post-fast. So, and I've experienced this, and I've told you guys this, or I've said this many times on the show. When I do my, because I just did one this weekend, I did another, I did like 36-hour fast this weekend. When I do my 48 or 72-hour fast, I do notice that two to three days after the fast, when I start refeeding. I get like this muscle building, fat loss, kind of like amped up effect. And what they said in the mice is that kind of happened. And they think that it has to do with the fact that your old cells die off. Mm. And then when you refeed, you know, because you have all these stem cells that are stimulated, they turn into new cells. And that process itself, I guess, speeds up the metabolism. Yeah. Mm. yeah how many months are you going on now? You're, you're a good six, seven, seven. Month, seven months of consistently yeah. doing that. And I'm really learning how to use it. Uh, when I need it, it's 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 been a very valuable tool for me and my you know my gut issues, which are f- for sure immune related. For sure, here's another connection I made with my with my gut. If I'm starting to have a really bad immune reaction, I if I take an antihistamine, it actually helps a little bit, which tells me that there's for sure that type of an immune reaction that's happening. What as are well. you what are you using for an anti like Zyrtec, Zyrtec oh. or whatever? Oh, really? Uh-huh. What other ones are there out there? Claritin, Zyrtec, you know, Benadryl, which make you drowsy. Yeah, yeah. So I went on the, I, I, I'll go, I'll visit forums with people who, because you can read people's experiences in a lot of these forums, and, and the science isn't supported yet, but you can see a lot of anecdote, right? Because there's thousands of people on some of these forums, and sure enough, lots of people with irritable bowel syndrome type symptoms and stuff like that say that they do get symptom relief with an antihistamine like Claritin or hmm. or Zyrtec. Now, the reason why I put that together is I have another strange symptom that I never connected until recently is every once in a while, I'll get like very small and random hives on my, on my body. Very random. And it's nothing crazy or nothing for me to worry about. Just, it has nothing to do with the herpes or anything like no, that. No, hey. it's not my herpes. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A couple times a year. It's in remission. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't have herpes. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I got to make sure I, I say I just want to put that out yeah, there. Yeah, make sure I put that. <laughs> not on my genitals. But I'll get, I'll anyway. get every once in a while, I'll get these hives. And then I started connecting that when that would happen, my gut would... Would, would be off. Now, is this related? I remember we talked with Dr. Ruscio, and he talked about certain foods that histamine. promoted histamine. And and you started to eliminate that, but then you started reintroducing it. Now, do you notice, like, as you've you've learned that about yourself and you've eaten, like, those foods that have histamines, like, I, how's that affecting I you? I haven't connected that to the hives yet, but what I have connected is that it's just a systemic immune response. Like, mm. when my gut is off, it's my immune system that's that's causing the problem because it's reacting to foods or whatever, right? And when my immune system's off, it's going to be it's going to it probably will display symptoms of, you know, autoimmune, which may be increased 
rates of asthma. It may be more skin issues. Like Adam will start to notice his psoriasis starts to flare up more. Yeah. It may be itchy eyes. It may be running nose. It may be congestion. It may be sleep apnea. By the way, sleep apnea is strongly connected to, uh, well, I don't want to say strongly connected because uh, it's still loose, but anecdotally speaking, and a lot of functional medicine doctors say snoring and sleep apnea p- might be less due to the fact that you're overweight because they always say, oh, you're overweight or you have to get your tonsils removed. No, p- more likely due to the fact that you have food intolerances. So people have mm-hmm. those issues. Mm-hmm. Their finding go away when they treat the food intolerance issues. Bro, it could be your cheese. <laughs> Might be. I'm going through this process for this uh, competition. So. Oh, what did you? Yeah. What, what have you guys started so far? I, I don't hear know it. if I want to review. Are we, are we not, like leave, re, are we not letting each other know the trade plan. secrets here? Or what? Yeah, when are I'm we not afraid. actually I'll talk doing about it. that? Huh? It's fine. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm going all carnivore diet. Oh, oh shit! So yeah. you're eliminating vegetables too? All of it. I'm so gonna. Fuck did you start you up. that already? You yep. get fucked up. When did you start that? I started like maybe three days ago. Fuck off. So just meat. I won't fuck off. You yeah. Know? I'll yeah. fuck in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, I just started eliminating all that and, and then upped my butcher box, and this is a free plug for them. But um, I, I I made sure that I got like as much meat as I could in the house and stocked up. And so um, I'm just trying it out because it's something that, that uh, caught my interest was, and you mentioned sleep apnea. Um, I was listening to Jordan Peterson on, on Joe Rogan. Oh, and, he did say that. And he said that it, it really helped. Uh, him wake up in the morning and mm-hmm. he felt like all this energy and that that was the thing that got me not like dr sean baker like i wasn't like i mean it was a great compelling case he was promoting sure. with it uh but for me i just was like well why don't i try something i've fasted before i've done that have i ever done just a you know meat specific diet for a couple of weeks no so that's I just fi- like I figured that it would be worth experimenting. So to see, sure, thirty days, who gives a shit? Yeah, Anybody, yeah, and it's like, and maybe maybe there are some vegetables that are promoting, you know, some intolerance that I like I need to address, you know. But the like I'm going to reintroduce it and and, and kind of work my way through. Now, that. day, so day you, three, how are you feeling? Great. Yeah, how's your poops? You're full on. Fine. You're wow. full, like you're full on already. Like yeah. there's no, you're not kind of doing. It's a little funny. Bit. One of the questions in the no, call yeah, is about is, is about carnivore. Oh wow! Yeah, so we'll get into it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we're because I want I want to get into it now, but we'll wait till we get to the question. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. I that's know, fucking. Look crazy. at this guy's gonna be all undercover, and not say anything. Well, of course, he's singing now. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I, I just, so I I don't know, man. I just was like, this is something I want to do because it's, and it's more health driven. I know we're all trying to you know promote our physiques and shit. I give a shit about that. Like, I just want to get healthy. <laughs> She's gonna beat us, bro. I would say that if I was the fat guy too. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, all you're doing, I just realized something, Adam. All you're doing is you're making him super motivated. No, you feel, anybody says shit like that, it definitely fuels me. Yeah. So, it's great. so you got to do the opposite. Yeah. I'm Justin, excited. Justin, Justin, you're doing hey, a good job. Handicapping all, I'm no, still going to fuck no, you guys no, no, up. No, no, yeah, you're no. doing a good job, no, I, Justin. I don't listen to anybody. You don't need Dude, to go I do this hard. all 100% for myself. I don't give so a fuck good. about anybody. He looks so good already. Yeah. I know, and you hurt your back. Yeah, yeah. dude. Showing off. God, I'm an You're asshole. You're trying too hard, man. Yeah. Such an asshole. Well, I was warming up with some weight, and then you went to try to deadlift it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't work out with nobody, dude. You know the worst part about Taylor is like, I don't even know what he's talking about. He's like, I wasn't even looking at him. I was like, it doesn't uh, matter. It's because you were around. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was uh, just solid. He was like, we were, we were dead. He was working out with me. Enzo and him have been lifting. We've been all lifting together whenever I can, right? And uh, Taylor got his workout in with me, and it was a uh, back day, right? We're deadlifting. And I just felt great, man. I was feeling strong and just weight going up. You saw up. my video. You saw yeah, all the I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was a little bit of all that shit. You know what I'm saying? You got me, dude. You fucking brain injured me a little bit there. You know what I'm saying? Didn't even know I, I got I even tagged you guys. That's awesome. I, just, I know. That, I do that so yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know, I me at all. Pulled, the, pulled the 405 up and it was just coming up like butter the first set. And I was like, man, I, uh, this is the, the, I hadn't pulled 405 for reps. I think I pulled five or six reps really clean, beltless, everything. And uh, felt so great. Ran it back the second, the next set, and on the third, second or third rep, I heard this pop when I was about midway up, and I just let go of the bar, and I, like instantly kind of felt my back start to seize up, and I thought, oh god, please no. Walking around, and then I realized like, oh shit, I'm done. Mm. So it's been what am I on day three? It's a muscle pull though. You look yeah, right. yeah. No, I'm I'm okay. Like I know that I'm I, I've been here before where I've you know again this is You're exam- just getting old. We t- yeah, we, <laughs> we talk about it all the time. Like we preach it all happens. this shit all day long. And if there's anybody, and this is a, an, again another reason why I like to train by myself. When I can train by myself, I it's easier for me to take ego. It's out. Easier for you to be smart. It is. Yeah. It's easier for me to be smart. I don't even have this temptation. If I'm by myself, there's no one to show off for. You know. 
I'm saying? And I know my own limits. It's like I would be happy that I'm I was pulling the 405, yeah. but I wouldn't go back to try. Like, I could I could I could totally see that because I work out with Jessica and she keeps me straight. Right? She's very she's smart with the training. Both of us are pretty, and it works out great. But I can see working out with younger guys. That might, of course, especially, when, might especially you when they're making comments like, "Damn, dude, you could pull that up." I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watch this, <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. I can do a this. lot more than that. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> like, you have no idea. Yeah, I can actually do a lot more. The, than the that. two times, that's a trap. The two yeah. or three times we worked out together, it's like without even without us realizing, it starts to turn into that kind of shit. Oh, it ramps know? up quickly, yeah. super fast. Yeah. There was that one time we were deadlifting at Justin's old gym. So I want to know. I want. I should ask you this because I ramped. Can I overdose? On turmeric, I mean, I've been, I've been eating, I've been chewing the fucking organic turmeric pills like candy right now. Uh, can I OD? You, can I OD uh, on turmeric? Uh, not tech. I mean, of course you can overdose on anything. I but mean, I'm, I'm doing eight, hard to eight do, pills a day. Right nah, now. you're fine. Okay, that's what I do. Okay, I do eight pills a day. Is there, no is there like a too much or is, is, can it be? It, it, if it upsets your stomach, sure. Okay. If you start to smell like well, I was already doing it four and four. I and thought about kicking it throwing it in the middle there too. But if you are you doing fish oil? I am doing our fish oil too. I would go eight. Uh, eight capsules of fish oil, also. Damn, with yeah. the eight of the, sixteen. Yeah, pills? and take them together because the fat helps the turmeric get absorbed. You trust him oh. during mm-hmm. competition mode? Oh yeah, you trying yeah. to fuck with me right no, now? No, listen, <laughs> that's something about me. That's something about me. I'm, yeah, I'm I, straight I, up I when I'm fucking with you. you. Yeah. If I, I'll post <laughs> straight a video. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. Yeah, I'll post a video and tag you, and that's and you know, like he's yeah, fucking yeah, with yeah. me. Yeah. I'm not sneaky. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to win. Listen, I don't want to win because I lied or because I tricked you. I want to win because you tried your hardest. I tried my hardest. And I won. I agree. That's when it matters. I feel it. Yeah, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to free. It doesn't me feel like a win if yeah. you fucking you yeah. know some sneaky shit. I like. I hear you saying that. Yeah. But I still don't trust you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Justin doesn't trust you and I. Uh, he thinks we're conspiring. Hell no. Well, now that I know uh, he's on, myself. now that I know he's on all meat and stuff like that, I'm gonna be sliding carbs into all his meals. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna Go start for it. Dude. I'm gonna I'll make a steak. Trash. I'm gonna make a steak for him, but I'm gonna put like grains of rice, like stick them in there. <laughs> inside. Just the inject it, yeah. you know, just like, a little bit like, of starch, just yeah, to throw you sugary off. water. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. It's gonna be, it's for you know, what my goal is my goal is to I, we'll we'll do this contest. That's gonna be fun. I really want to pull 600, dude, before I turn 40. Nice. That's that's, a, that's the next year. Do it. That's a big goal, man. I know. Yeah. I want to, and I want to do it while not weighing too much over two hundred pounds, maybe around two two hundred five, something like that. It's funny that that's yours, and I was telling Katrina the other day. No, sorry, not six hundred five eighty five. Uh, I can, I'll go for six. Let's say six hundred. Dude, that'd six be a good, is a good I pulled, number. I pulled six hundred before, but I was a big fucking heavy su- fucker. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to do well, it while staying relatively gain some weight, dude. We'll see, dude. You know we'll see I mean? if my, you know, if my gut health stays good. Ass. You guys are fucked. Listen, if my yeah. gut health is good. You're done. Where's everybody? I'm telling you right now. Where's everybody you, weighing you right now? Mass, so I know dude. where everybody's at. What, where are you weighing? Now? I'm around 200 probably. You're at two flat right now. Yeah, right Justin, around where you 20. At, you're 220 right now. Mm-hmm. What are, where are you at? 218. You're at 218. Yeah, so we're all we're all around each other right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's let's bring like, it. It's on like Donkey Kong. Bring the bird. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from R Lewis 7991. What should you do when you hit a plateau and cannot gain muscle or even strength? Just give, give up. up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Next kidding. next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've hit your genetic potential. <laughs> Wouldn't that suck? Yeah. yeah. If that was the advice. Like, sorry. Yeah. You're not You're building screwed. any more muscle. You know, so the kind of people that tend to ask this question, because I think to myself, like, okay, the average person, when they plateau, they probably just need to eat a little better and, and maybe work out more. But when people tend to ask this one about I can't gain muscle or strength, I feel like he's probably doing too much. Like he's mm-hmm. pushing too hard, doing too okay, – this was me. When I was a kid and I would plateau, my MO was, oh, that means I need to do more drop sets, more failure on my sets. I need to add more exercises. And I did that for a long time, and it took me a while to figure out that the answer was to do a See, little I, bit less. See, I, I think it, it tends to be, or you know, for sure me and the people that I, I train that would fall into this category are the ones that tend to be following a similar type of a routine, 
Like that's not oh, like they don't change. They, they don't ever. periodize their workouts. Yeah, yeah. They they stick to one kind of modality. They're constantly chasing building muscle or strength, which can be very closely related. And so a lot of their programming looks very similar. At least for me, this was a lot of like the challenges that I had. I would hit these plateaus, and then you know when I looked into the, I'd always think it was, you know, oh I wasn't training hard enough or had something to do with my diet. Which of course those those areas are you know intensity and diet have. A, a big role to play but many times you know I was just kind of stuck doing the same types of exercises or the same rep range same rest period and so there's a lot of variables that I think that you can manipulate and play with that you know or uh, what I would do is I would ma- manipulate like one of them like oh I'm I was a tiny change yeah a small change like yeah. that and, the, and you know it's too close to what my body was already used to it needs to see uh it needs to see something else to kind of shock the system yeah because right? what I've done mm-hmm. in the past with people like this is I'll have them do a radical change right. like okay so you're doing you know ten to twelve reps and your rest periods are thirty seconds and you're doing lots of sets what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut your sets in half or do less exercises more sets per exercise you're doing low reps. And you're resting longer in between sets. And what I would do in between that switch many times, which is because here's the deal. If you're at this point where you're pushing your body so hard and it's plateaued, many times a week off and then a switch works better than just going straight to the switch. Sometimes they both work. Right. But many times what I've done to people, especially in this particular situation that I'm explaining, is I'll say, okay, take a week off. And then the next week, when you come back, you're going to start a completely different. That works type of workout, really well you know? when it's what you're saying. When it's somebody yeah. who has been hammering their yeah. body so much, they're training five to seven days a week minimum, and they're and they're a lot of volume in their workouts. That's an incredible suggestion. If it's somebody who's not so crazy, and they've hit a, a hard plateau, my suggestion would be to go the opposite. Direction. So if you're somebody who like Sal saying low rest periods, ten to twelve reps. Than giving you these longer rest periods, lower lower reps, re- lower yeah. reps. Now, if you're somebody who's doing the lower reps, long rest periods, then actually going up to 15, 20 reps and supersetting mm-hmm. and and doing that type of training could could. Mm-hmm. Oh show. yeah, that's where I'm at right now. And that's to be. I mean, what Sal was mentioning is probably more common in our space as far as like like gym people. But mm-hmm. like yeah, for me it was always like I tend to love the low reps and and rest kind of a, a phase versus you know the high reps and, and the hypertrophy and the uh you know supersetting and you know the, that type of training so um so that just is an indication that i need to i need to step into that and, and definitely like shock my system and i think get i think you're i think you're more on the i think sal what sal is saying is less is less common or, but maybe in his experience but in mine i that's what i see i see yeah. even ourselves like when i look at and evaluate all of us in this room you know, if there if there is a, a weakness in our, our programming training, is that we all typically, even ourselves, tend to gravitate towards the things that we love to do the most. Of course, you know well, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I mean, how many times have you walked in the studio and seen Sal doing 15 to 20 reps and supersetting it with an exercise? Yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like you just mm-hmm. that's not a favorite of his. He's admitted that on the show plenty of times. Like I never before you guys, I never trained one to three rep. Ran- never did that before, yeah. and so. I think if it's most people tend to gravitate towards what they're good at and you've probably gotten really good at the way you're training right now, which is why you've seen a, a halt in your strength. The other day I was, uh, we were here kind of late. Oh no, I got in here in the morning. <laughs> Justin was fucking sweating his ass off and he was doing maps aesthetic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which dude. is so different from how you normally, by the way, how did you feel after that workout? I felt, did you overdo it or was n- it? All right? No, actually no. That That has been the game for me is to really, do this and again like adam i'm susceptible to that like being like caught if there's people around me like like loading more weight you know Mm -hmm. going less reps like really trying to press myself in that direction so for me to go um you know less weight and more reps i i really have to like get into my own zone in my own corner and so um no i didn't overdo it but at the same time i was fucking beat dude Mm -hmm. i was taxed did you get super sore I was sore, but I wasn't like super sore. You know, I was like just sore because it was new stimulus. But um, my my overall energy has been increasing as a result. So, really? Yeah. So you're feeling better? Yeah, I'm feeling a little better. We, actually, we awakened a beast. Bro. I started it's split. Happening. You, and you did split. Now you yeah, yeah. Split. No, I'm on the I'm on th- the third. Dude, we day. wrote that shit really well. I yeah, I am very <laughs> impressed with ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You know what? That's on. You backs. know, I tell you what, I you, I get caught up in my own shit sometimes. Yeah. Where yeah. I want to go in and just do what I feel. I know. But sometimes you got to follow a program because when we wrote it, we were in the right state of mind. We weren't yeah. working out. There was no egos. It was like, okay, we're writing this for other people. Mm-hmm. 
It was so it's I, well made. I'm so There's glad a bit of freedom in it. You know, yeah. like really just going off of a plan versus mm-hmm. like drumming it up as you're getting to the gym. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm really glad that I waited. Like I, I waited until I felt like I, I had increased the volume in my current training to even warrant moving over to split. And I probably, after feeling what I felt like after the first two days of training split, I could have even followed more of a red or black protocol for a little bit longer before because I definitely got sore. It got me. You mm-hmm. know, it definitely got me. I hadn't you know, basically focused on a single muscle, one or two muscle groups like that in, a, in an entire workout. Yeah. And we definitely put some, put some stuff in there. You know, you know, if I do want to, if, if this person is looking to me, for me to mention or for us to mention like one trick to change or to break through a plateau, although they don't work <clears throat> nearly as well as like what we're talking about earlier, where you change your routine completely or take a week off. There is one thing that I've used in the past, one small thing that I've added and whenever I add it, I do see myself break through a plateau, and that's occlusion. Occlusion, mm. as silly as it is, mm-hmm. you know, as it sounds, it's and so it's so different to, though, which is great, dude. And I haven't done it in a while, and I'm saving it. I'm saving it for hmm. the end of this contest. But when I used it on my calves and my arms, it was like, <clears throat> boom! I saw, you know, yeah. ch- muscle growth. Why do I? And what all I did was add it to my routine. I didn't change anything else. Dude, my favorite video you've done so far is the when you occluded your biceps. Oh yeah, that was hilarious. Oh, yeah. teach you to make a thumbnail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if I were one. to give one one piece of advice to this person, I would say, look at your rep range, look at your rest period, look at your exercise, change all three of those variables, and and try and change them as dramatically as possible. So if your rest periods, if you're leaning towards the the higher end where you're resting ninety seconds or more go to really, really short rest periods. If your rep range is really high reps, then go all the way down to low rep range mm-hmm. or flip it if it's mm-hmm. advice for it. your exercises. You can follow whatever, whether you're doing a split or an anabolic full body type of routine, you can still follow all that, but flip all your exercises on its head. So give. It's true. So if you change all three of those stimuluses, uh, I, I can't imagine your body not responding. What happens is you tend to, like I said, gravitate yep, yeah. towards two or three that you tend to yeah. like. And changing like. exercises, I the cannot. Well. Cha- even just changing exercises, I can't stress enough how how impactful it can be and how much I forget sometimes. It's oh, like yeah. I incorporate the snatch grip high pulls mm-hmm. and I, you know, I've been fucking doing shrugs and training my traps forever. Did that, boom. Oh, incorporating you, power right away. in general, a lot of people avoid power, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a great way to, yep. to stimulate new results. Did you guys see our boy, Ben Pollock, actually switch? He, you know that guy, as massive as he is and as strong as he is, never has done a lunge? Wait, what? Never? Say that again. Yes. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to get, crazy. His, his squats are going to go through the roof. I oh, know. Yeah. So I that think split has he done, shit? yeah, I was going to say, has he done any Bulgarian split? None of, squats that's, that's or any of that. This shit's going to go through the roof, dude. I know. Dude, I'm, I'm excited to see how his body responds. I saw he just posted on his Instagram uh, like maybe maybe a week ago or so. And it shows him with the the forty five, which is so funny to see even a pl- just one plate yeah. on his on, on the on the on the bar for well, him. Well, the fact that he's probably know. it's probably difficult for him because he's never done it. He's probably getting a crazy pump. Those gains in that are going to carry over. Oh, you oh can, my god! You can just see the I stability mean, he's going to oh, create you going back just, into his. Yeah, his, look at when you get a chance. Go to his go to his Instagram. Look at the video of him doing it, and you could just see what a new stimulus it is for his body. He's so yeah. used to you know being on both feet and squatting heavy ass fucking weight, just putting one thirty five on his back and lunging forward wow. you can just see his body having to work what a so great many, experiment yeah, he's gonna explode right. what a great experiment right so and again that's another example of like mm-hmm. you know you i think a, a, a you can probably find some movements Dude, you know that you're, he you're competed not- uh at powerlifting while he was like cutting down for you know bodybuilding oh that's there's like, there's the like, holy there's, shit there's the video right there it's crazy good looking out doug yeah there you go look at it, 135 you see him the, 15 years of lifting and in, uh, and six years of powerlifting, this was the first time doing lunges for him. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You look can totally it. tell. Oh, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. See, it's that back. It's that split stance stability that he's look at having it. issues yeah. with. So great, dude. Look at how challenging He's concentrating that. really hard. Yeah. Uh, you know what's the thing about I get him? it, man. You know I what I like that. about him a lot is that be- because he's lean, you could clearly see the type of muscle development you get with heavy training. Yeah. And he has very dense looking muscle. And he has a very strong looking core. Yeah. I mean, his obliques are, are insane. And that's because the fucker deadlifts and squats yeah. shit tons of weight. He's got nothing but load carried on his back. Yeah, like, man. And if you're if, if you're a you know, if you want to build that quality looking muscle, you know, bodybuilders talk about muscle maturity, lift heavy. 
Yeah. That's for, where you get it, man. For those of you that are listening that uh, obviously you guys can't see and stuff like that, you guys can look up our boy, you know, Ben at uh, PH Deadlift on Instagram, and he does all kinds of great videos. Really, really smart guy. He's been on our YouTube channel. Yeah, good channel. friend of ours. Right. Yeah. All right, next question is from Sprickers. Dr. Terry Walls advocates eating at least six to eight servings of vegetables each day. Dr. Sean Baker advocates eating only meat. Eating six to eight servings of veggies seems like a lot, and eating none doesn't sound ideal either. When it comes to eating vegetables, how do we find our individual minimum effective dose? Well, first of all, I, I think we should start with, I don't think that Sean Baker advocates eating only meat. I don't think he's telling people that it's a it's the ideal diet for most people. Mm. Did you he, get that from him? He's not saying maybe that specifically, but he's definitely advocating for the carnivore diet. Yeah. And yeah. saying how... and he, He's he, pushing for people to move in that direction to experience it, I think. So, yeah. yeah and, he, and he does say a lot of stuff like, you know, vegetables contain, you know, things that, you know, cause, you know, immune reactions or your body right. doesn't want to digest them. And, you know, here's the thing with diet that I think we need to... And this is why it's so crazy. This is why... Yeah. Why information is so conflicting, and this is why we've had them both on the show. Yeah, this is yeah. why it's so conflicting. <laughs> Getting polarized right away. Already. When when it comes to nutrition, the information we can get, you can read one study that says new study shows that eating a you know mainly vegetable based diet reduces risks of cancer. Da, da, da. Oh, this study shows a keto diet reduces risk of cancer, and inflammation, and diabetes. Oh, this study shows paleo. This study shows Mediterranean diet. Like here's the deal when it comes to nutrition, the your individual body and your immune system, which plays a massive role in how you react to food and how you assimilate food, your immune system is a fingerprint. It literally is very individual to, mm -hmm. to you. And you'll be more similar to people you're related to than you will to people you won't. This is why you'll see people in families tend to eat better or tend to do better on similar diets than people who aren't. It's an immune, it's, it's your fingerprint. This is why we will find people who do really, really well on a carnivore diet, or you'll find people who do really, really well on a vegan diet. There is no one diet that is best for everybody. And yep. people need to, because people debate this shit all the time, yeah. like they're debating math. Politics. You know, <laughs> no, it's like they debate math. It like doesn't, one yeah, plus one is two. equate to the same thing. No, it's not the same at all. Now, I think the reason why, the, and I know you're, you're trying the carnivore diet, yeah. Justin. The reason why I think a lot of people do well on the carnivore diet, or not a lot of people, but the people who say they do well on it, do well on it. Because what they're eliminating. It's what they're not eating. Exactly. It has nothing to do with the fact I'm that it's just I'm very aware of that. And that's, and that's really the point of doing it for me is like- This is like an elimination it's diet like, it's, Exactly. That's exactly how I'm using it is an elimination diet where you know I'm just focused on one thing where I've, I can now reintroduce things and then see how that affects my body, pay attention to the signs and signals and move forward. But I'm not going to stay you know, just eating meat regardless of, of if I feel awesome. Like, yeah. right? That's not flexible. That's yep. not like a long-term strategy. And it all goes down to you have to look at the context of evolution always whenever you look at these things. And humans, there were many times that humans – were very few of us on earth. We almost starved, almost died uh, or died out because of whatever, you know, the, 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 the ice age or just life is fucking hard for a human in the natural world without technology, without, we take all that for granted. And so we lived through periods of eating whatever was around us. I guarantee you ancient humans ate insects. I guarantee you that. Yep. I guarantee you they ate a lot of plants. You think of, you think a caveman is going to walk by Jeez. edible plants and be like, no, I'm a carnivore. Yeah. No, they ate it. If it was there, they ate it. Do vegans have a problem with eating insects? I'm just curious. No, I don't think so. Because insects aren't cute. Oh. Yeah, if insects were cute, <laughs> they would have like, a problem. Yeah. yeah. Buggy eyes. Yeah, you never see them trying to save little you know, mandibles. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, again, would, it, would a caveman turn down a, you know, a hunted woolly mammoth and be like, no, I'm... I'm sorry, I'm a vegan. I only eat. <laughs> no, yeah. man, they no, ate. You're hungry. So that meant that there were probably large, long periods of time where all they ate was or the meat, other. or all they ate were plants, yeah. or all they ate was both, or they ate nothing. Mm. This is why fasting is so healthy, because humans routinely went without food for long periods of time. Yeah. So you, you got to look at it that way. So what's the right effective dose for you? This is the advice I give everybody when it comes to nutrition. There's general rules. Here's a general rule. Avoid heavily processed foods. I think that's true for everybody. That's one that I think is, is, is mostly true for everybody. Heavily processed foods haven't been around that long. They are designed and engineered to be highly palatable. So good luck trying to figure out whether or not you're eating enough or eating too much or whether you're hungry or not because 
those foods are designed to, to fuck with all that shit. I, I experienced that recently. I was, you know, eating dinner and I found myself full, but I for sure could grab potato chips and eat more, even though I knew I was full. My stomach hurt, but I could for sure grab potato chips. So that's, you know, that, that's something to pay attention to. I'd say avoid heavily processed foods. Don't overeat all the time. Don't eat until you're uncomfortable. That's another one. Other than that, oh, a lot of things are kind of up for, for right. grabs. And you got to kind of listen to your body. Like if you're eating a lot of meat and you're finding your digestion is off, you're not sleeping well, you feel inflamed. I've had clients who had an intolerance to meat where they couldn't eat red meat, for example. Although that's rare. Rare, but mm-hmm. can happen. I would tell that person Medium rare. not to eat <laughs> not to eat much meat. That's yeah. a lame joke. I've also known people to have intolerances to most vegetables, like Dr. Sean Baker. Christina Rice is someone like that. She can't eat a lot of vegetables because they, they start to bother her. I would tell that person, listen to your body. But your body changes too, by the way. So let's say Justin does a carnivore diet and feels fucking amazing. Right. He would be an idiot to think that he's going to force himself to eat like this forever. I would eat like this until you start noticing that, oh, you know, some things kind of be off. And right. now I'm gonna, that happened to me with keto. Like keto makes me feel really good. Mm-hmm. But I notice if I'm on it for too long, I get some detrimental effects and I start to get benefits. Inevitably, from yeah. That, I, I anticipate that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But, you, you know, I don't know. I'm going to go through the process and see. Well, this is a little bit like we talked with Dr. Drew about the other day. Just, you know, with his, Same exper- thing with him, yeah, with his experience with keto, my experience with keto. It's just... Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's I think it's really uh, advantageous for us to just rotate through a lot of these diets and pay attention to how you feel. When I used to coach clients, yep. this is exactly what I would do. They would ask, "Well, what kind of diet we're going to follow?" Well, first of all, we're going to follow any diet. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to assess how you normally eat. So you're going to track and show me what you currently do, and then we can start to okay. Well, let me. And I what I'd like to do is I always like to take them to the other side, right? So if you're somebody who's like gravitated towards sugar and lots of carbohydrates, then yeah, no running so or a paleo or a ketogenic type of style would be a great way. Let's see how your body responds when we do this. And then let's see what it responds when we go vegan. Let's see what it responds when you do like a zone type of diet. Let's see what it, how your body's responding to all these different. And I think that you got to be careful of is when you see the results, because what happens to most people- yeah, you get you're attached to it, man. Right. Then they become very dogmatic. Oh, my body just does so well with this. Well, does it do so well or are you so far on the other side for so long that you made the switch and so your body's thanking you for that finally. Maybe it'll do that again mm-hmm. six months down the road when you decide to switch out of that diet into another right. one. Right. So even Dr. Mercola, who's like the the god of the godfather of keto, right? He's the godfather of eat no carbs, eat lots of fat. He's been talking about this for decades on on the internet. Even he now advocates for once a week, eat enough carbs to kick yourself out of ketosis. He even says that that's probably healthy and beneficial. So, I mean, and I'm, I, I coach people now. I have people now that I, I don't work with a lot of people, just a few, like I've said before, to keep my, my finger on the pulse of what's going on. But they're radically different. I'll have clients that, and I, what I typically do when I, when I coach someone is I'll give them, you know, three or four days a week of a, of a low carb option and three or four days a week of a higher carb option. And then we observe and see how they feel. Now, most people are kind of okay with both because it's not extreme. I don't go extreme high carb and extreme low carb. We'll just kind of, but I do get the occasional people who they'll give me, you know, feedback and they'll be like, oh man, the low carb days, I feel terrible. I have no energy. I don't feel strong in the gym. I don't have good sleep. And then I'll get the opposite where people tell me, oh man, the low carb days feel the best for me. That's when I have the most energy. And so then we start to kind of lean towards what is feeling better for that person. Right. Mm-hmm. I tried the carnivore okay. diet and it's funny because I got a lot of flack for this from people because they're like, you got to stick to it longer. You got to go through the initial period or whatever. Look, (laughs) okay, I went into the carnivore diet after a fast and after that and before that fast, I was eating keto. So it wasn't that big of a difference. It's not very dramatic. Yeah. The difference was that I just didn't eat vegetables. I also know my body very well and I know the difference between my digestive system adjusting to a new diet versus having a major reaction to not eating the way my body wants to and needing to come out of it. Mm. So two, three days later, carnivore diet, I couldn't do it. I had to have vegetables because I, what I was experiencing was no bowel movements and then the opposite, which was like a flood, and it was not good. And I could tell my immune system wasn't reacting well, so I came out of it. I didn't need to go longer. I didn't need to see if I can stick to it longer. You know, If it worked the other way, would I have continued longer? I just would have listened to my body. So you kind of have to do that for yourself. The, what I typically recommend clients do 
is eat more veg. Usually, people need to eat more vegetables. In my experience, they usually do better eating more vegetables. I agree. Mm-hmm. Well cooked vegetables seem to be easier to digest for most people. So that's another thing too. So if I tell people, okay, you're only eating one serving of vegetables a day, let's double it and go to two. I don't typically recommend they go to a raw, you know, raw vegetables right away. I'll say let's go well cooked because that seems to be easier for people to digest. And I'll slowly increase their vegetable intake until they're like, oh, I don't want any more vegetables or I'm not feeling that good. And then I back off a little bit and then we find out what that sweet the spot is. The bottom line is you got to pay attention to yourself, right? The, and look at these things like energy, mood, your sleep, yeah. your libido, your digestion, like your stool. like pay, Yeah, awesome. pay attention to all those things. And you, you may be somebody who, you know, when you lean more towards an all-meat diet, you feel better on. You may be someone who leans more towards like a vegan type diet, you feel better. Or you might feel great right in the middle. So... It really just depends on how, how you feel. Yeah. I feel personally, I feel best when I have a serving of vegetable with every meal. I agree. Are you the same way? Yeah, I'm the same way too. But, and part of that for me is it actually help. So I, like when I look at my plate, like I, I tend to go to the vegetables first and then I go to the meat and fat. And the last thing I do is the carbohydrate. So I like it just because of that too. It kind of keeps me because for most of my life I was the opposite I was starch yeah I'd eat fill up on the starches the potatoes and the rices and pastas and you know bread and just drill all that and then maybe I get to the meat and then Mm. rarely ever get to my vegetable where I've just kind of flipped the order of eating and not only do I feel better but it also keeps me from overindulging on certain foods Mm. that I probably shouldn't something else I've noticed that uh, that's interesting I'm going to keep paying attention to and I did I wanted to bring this up and I forgot to I seem to do better because now I'm having more starches. I seem to do better when I have the starches by themselves. So if I eat my protein and fats and vegetables, that seems to, I seem to digest it better when I have that by itself. And then later, an hour or two later or whatever, just have the starches all by themselves, which is counter to what I used to think, which was have the fats and proteins to blunt the insulin response, but my digestion wasn't as good. Now, I've, I've read, uh, I know in Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, they recommend not combining starches with uh, proteins and fats. Hmm. That's and I think interesting. It's sort of interesting, right? I'm going to keep paying attention to that and see how that, how that feels for me. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Next question is from J- Johnson35. What are your best alternatives to amphetamines to help the younger generation focus when they need to be productive? Oh, wow, wow. This is a crazy... This has got to be a response to Ritalin. what we've been talking about. We talked about this with Dr. Drew. Dude, we you see about- Dr. Drew's response? Oh, yeah. He was so angry. He yeah. didn't even want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that, that the medical community is doing with amphetamines what they did with, uh, with opiates. Yeah. Because right now we're in an opiate epidemic. But right on its heels is an amphetamine uh, epidemic. Which is going to pass it. The way it's going right now. Oh, uh, well, we're giving it to, like, kids. They're just handing like, them out like, too, too frivolously. Uh, it's one, what is it, one out of every 10 kids no. is on amphetamines? Young kids. And the doses they gave them, I mean, you, you guys remember when we all tried, uh, you know, was it Ritalin or Adderall at 10 yeah. milligrams? And yeah. we're all like, mm-hmm. holy shit. It was powerful. And then, I, and then I looked up, like, how much they give to kids and- Oftentimes, kids will take twice that much. That's Young crazy. kids, eight that's, years old. It's crazy. To you me. imagine giving a kid twenty milligrams of fucking? No, that makes me angry. Dude. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's insane yeah. to me. I think I think part of the problem, and it, it, I remember in the was it Magic Pills or what was the documentary? Oh, take your take, pills. take your pills. Mm-hmm. I don't want to keep saying Magic Pills. Take your. I, I think <laughs> because they are magic. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah they, really. That's why I keep Cross thinking over of there. No, I think uh, the, one of the, the one of the moms in there, I think hit it hit it on the head, which was you know. I used to just take them outside and run and exercise and 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 get them outside. Where I feel like we live the generation coming up now, you're just so glued to your computer screen and we're so sedentary that it's just they're wound up. They're just wound up and all that. Mm-hmm. It's hard for them to settle down and focus on one thing. And of course, there's exceptions to the rule, and I'm, this is a total overgeneralization, right? But I think that's the first place that I would go is to getting them more physical, active, disconnected from the electronics, and then see how that starts to help them when they actually sit down Agreed. and focus on a yeah. task. Agreed. There was a school in Texas that uh, tripled recess time to try and, and combat this or work with this. Brilliant. And they almost all, this was the, this was the article, the, the news article, they almost all but eliminated uh, ADD symptoms in the kids yeah. because they had them go move. Here's the thing, like your brain, your brain doesn't just produce you know, what it wants to. It also receives feedback and then that kind of dictates how the brain operates. And a lot of that is this the, the your senses, and some of the senses are sight and sound and smell, and others are movement and touch and feel and experience. And if you don't go out and move a lot, because kids don't move nearly as much as yeah. they used to, 
So I've noticed that as, for my own kids. I noticed that as a big one. Like if my kids are on their computers for oh, two hours, it directly affects their mood. Hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like I, I have to go and and plan my day around getting them exercise, or getting them out, getting them activities because, and the it starts from the very moment we wake up. It's like. Uh, you know, their mood is affected by, you know, the time it takes for Courtney and mm-hmm. I to get out of bed. And then they've been watching TV or like being on some kind of electronic device. And by the time we connect to them and start our day, it's like that sets the tone. Yep. Yep. And then the other one is, is food. When I see my kids eat, uh, lots, sugar especially lots of sugar and lots of processed foods, mm-hmm. I notice their ability to focus is much, it's much lower, the more irritable, and just harder to deal with. And if mm-hmm. you're a teacher, you, you know, got these bunch of kids that are hard <laughs> to deal with. A drug like Ritalin or Adderall is like a godsend. Like, oh, look, my class is listening. Yeah, everybody's paying attention. The scary that's part. Terrible. The scary part about all this is it fucking works. Of course, right. you know what I'm saying. That's that's the scary part. Is that that this? That's should... why it's so popular, right? But here's the thing that Dr. Drew said that I thought was brilliant. Is he's like, yeah, they do a study with these things for one or two months. And you're going to get great results. Mm-hmm. You keep someone on this stuff for years, yeah. You start to see some interesting things that start to happen because amphetamines are connected to uh, mental disorders, schizophrenias, yeah. or uh, you know, it's going to have detrimental effects on the brain. I can't see that it it won't. I don't know. Like I well, haven't haven't didn't one of you didn't you share an article with us that like almost all the shootings that we've dealt with in the last like decade or whatever had 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 something to do with one yeah, of these- they're all on psychotropic type medications amphetamines and on uh, uh, other types of medications that's a hard one too because is it you know nobody wants to hear that well it could be cause or effect too is it that they already are troubled and which is why they're on them or Mm. could because look we all know how how like the classic tweaker and how crazy they can behave and what they can do Mm -hmm. you know actually i didn't even tell you guys my ex-wife's dad a fucking tweaker broke into his house in the morning when he was home Kicked his door down in the morning. In the morning, when he was home, kicked the door down. Like how early? It was like six a.m. Oh my god! Wow, kicks it's his light door, out. At kicks that point. his door down and comes upstairs. He confronts the guy, and the guy runs away. Cops show up, and they find the guy down the straight street breaking up, breaking into cars. He was obviously just not there. Yeah, just a total trying to tweaker. get his fix. That's yeah. it. We grew up. I mean, my cousin grew up in a town that was like tons of tweakers, and that's literally you have to be. From midnight to four in the morning, they're just they'll climb in someone's room, dude. Just like climb in and just try and steal steal something they could turn around and flip and sell for fifty to hundred bucks real quick so they can get a fix. They're very focused, you right. know, on one thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they don't a, consider all the ramifications yeah. or anything. They're just like, yeah. I'm getting this. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 No, I think I think some good alternatives are uh, scheduled activity. It has to be scheduled nowadays because it's not natural uh, for, for kids to move a lot anymore. Um, and then watch their diet. Have them eat a diet that's low in sugar, low in processed type foods, and then pay attention to if your kid does better with more frequent feeding or less frequent feeding. And one of the ways, one of the signals you can read for that is, is your kid hungry? Mm-hmm. So, because some parents will force feed their kids because it's a time and to hungry, eat. not cravings. Right, right, right. Because yeah, they're asking for chips or you know all that kind of shit. That just to, because they're craving a carb. That was a hard one for me because my, especially my daughter, she's just not hungry. She wants, she likes to eat once or twice a day. Yeah, and that was a hard that, for. That's my youngest. Yeah, that was a hard one to deal with for me because I was raised like, you no, know, you eat when we're yeah. supposed to, and you force feed your kids. So now, I'll ask her, are you hungry? And She'll say no, and then that's it. We you know, I, obviously, I, I'm not a child dealing with this, but I know just, this just happened to me yesterday, right? So Saturday, something I've been trying to get better about is, you know, I went back, I saw family, and so I completely set down the phone and didn't use it or didn't answer, didn't get any social media, didn't do none of that shit. The only problem with that is come Sunday morning or whatever, when I open up, I've got a fucking bajillion uh, DMs that I have to answer. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like answering on Sunday morning, and it took me about an hour and a half, two hours to get all the way through it. And then I just felt this like ugh, unmotivated, like all day long type of feeling. And I remember telling Katrina because we were, she was doing that. She was working on like the house stuff and things that we're looking for for that. So we were both kind of like on our phones and computer like all morning long. And I'm like, you know what? And I didn't want to do it. I could, t- I just felt like so mm-hmm. lethargic. I was like, let's get out. Let's just go for a walk. Let's just go for a nice walk for about a mile or two. And uh, I remember uh, she was kind of like, uh, I don't feel like we have to do this. We have to do that. I'm like, let's just break from what we're doing right now because I can feel, I can just feel the energy. I feel like bleh, about what we're doing. I'm not, I don't feel very productive anymore. 
got up, took a walk and completely changed my mindset. Just being out in nature, not having my phone on me, walking outside. And then I was able to come back and get more work done. So I don't know what you guys think about, you know, breaking up whatever the kids are doing, whether you're, they're doing homework or working. For oh, sure. Yeah. Changing like, the environment. Sure. Huge. Right. For sure. A hundred percent. That's what, that's what that school did. They, they tripled the recess time. Yeah. Kids scores went up. They were focusing more, uh, you know, they were, it was easier for them to focus. Symptoms of ADD and ADHD went down. I just think the the current environment of poor food uh, intake, low activity, recess is not even a thing anymore, and they're cutting you know physical you know physical mm-hmm. classes or whatever. Increase activity, change the processed food thing, change the the learning environment a little bit, and I think we wouldn't have a big issue. And I know it's harder to do than giving people pills, but uh, is it really though? You know what I mean? What are we right. What are we heading for? I right. don't know. Right. Next question is from O'Reilly06. What are some of the top items off of each of your bucket lists before you die? Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you guys have anything like that? You know, Mm. like big things where you're like, okay, this is something I want to do before. I mean, I'll create one. I don't really have any, but I'll I'll think of something. Yeah, I'm sure I would create a bucket list. Do you have one, Sal? Yeah, well, uh, I want to definitely write a book um, before, uh, before I die. It's something I want to do maybe sometime soon. That's one. Um, I want to do a very, very long, maybe hike the Ap- Appalachian Trail where you go and do like that long, you know, hike where you're out there forever and have to drop your food off. And I'm, I want to do something like that. And I haven't really thought of anything else, you know. Uh, hmm. that's, yeah, that's a tough one. I want to um, I want to throw $100,000 in ones at a strip club on the floor. <laughs> I think that would be what kinda, the fuck? I think it'd be kind of cool. Uh, it's a hundred thousand dollars in one classic once. Adam. You know what? You uh, could I, you could dude, almost you make could, it rain. You can almost like Donald Duck. You can almost Donald Duck swim through a hundred thousand dollars. That was Scrooge once. McDuck. Scrooge, McDuck. Scrooge McDuck, McDuck, not yeah. Donald Duck. Bro, uh, speaking of stupid money, wow. you want to hear something? Just made me so infur- furious this weekend. What? Yeah. Furious. What? So. Forbes magazine prints this oh, article. That's, that's Kylie going. Jenner yeah, yeah. is mm. worth nine hundred million dollars. She's maybe the first billionaire under a particular age or whatever. Fans have created these donation pages. Just to get her Help her there. get there? To help her become a billionaire. Wow. Are you fucking like, kidding me? Wow. Over So far, over 90- You have to do it. So, How much? so far, over, Why? over 90 people have donated over $2,000 to get her to that. Shut up. Oh, How I mean, sad I mean, is that? I mean, that's more important than curing disease. How sad world. is that? You know I mean? That we're donating money to- fucking people just because we oh man can we redirect that it shows money? you the, the power of social media though, it now. shows you how bad wow. people want Bunch rulers that's what i want we want like england has their royal family we do it with our celebrities like we want yeah. these people to we put them on a pedestal that is we misguided want them to, power stupid that's crazy so dumb <laughs> just wow. we want you to be a that's, billionaire that makes me angry yeah. Yeah. I don't. You know, bucket list wise, I don't. I don't have too many. I tend to like. Uh, you know, like Katrina and I do this a lot, where we decide in the beginning of the year, like, oh, we want to go here, we want to do that, and we set that goal in the beginning of the year, and we typically do it. There's not a lot of things that I've said that I really, really want uh, to do that I haven't done yet. But I'm sure. I'm sure this stuff will come up, and I'm sure as we get older, to where like. I'm looking at the end of my life, I think, more. Like, right now, I, I don't feel like I look at my life that often where it's like, mm. oh, I got You don't want to swim with sharks or something like that? Yeah, yeah. See, that's <laughs> like, and it's not to say that I wouldn't want to do some cool shit like that. Like, I'm definitely somebody who would be like, okay, I'm yeah. down for it. Like, you know, I love the podcast like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want us to do some cr- crazy- I, Podcast I, with sharks? Yeah. Well, I like what Taylor, Taylor's <laughs> yeah. idea of like podcasting in like the most crazy areas, I think it would just be cool to be the ones who do that. So, I mean, you could put that on a That'd bucket list. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, we want to do a hot air balloon. We want to do it under the sharks. We could do some cool shit like that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. But I don't really have a crazy bucket list. I haven't mm-hmm. thought about that. I think, yeah, I don't know about bucket because what we're doing right now kind of provides opportunity, like as far as travel goes. Like, eventually, I figure, like, we'll hit the spots I want to go. You know, like, I want to go to Machu Picchu. I want to go, like, you know, Egypt and, like, check out all the old ruins and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, that's not like anything that crazy. But I, I do have, like, this sci-fi book I want to finish yeah. at some point. Yeah, you like how I set that up? Yeah. I don't really have much. I don't, really have much. I don't have anything left. But I really want to write this sci-fi it's book that I've been working on my whole I've, life. <laughs> well, any idea that I've had that I haven't like fully 
actualized, like I want to fucking complete it. I want it to be out there in the world and be done. So it's like I expunge it out from maybe my, we'll my be existence. The maybe we'll be the production company to support your uh, exactly. Your well, movies. this is what we've been building all the back end for all of my ideas. You guys didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Can I be in it? Yeah. All right. Cool. I yeah, feel yeah. bad. I feel bad for this person because I think be a that's, wookie. That's a, it. Could be an interesting question. I just never sat down. Oh, I have it. another one for myself. I want to run for public office one day. Some kind of public office one really? day. Really? Yes. Damn. Uh huh. You, you like, torture yourself. Uh huh. Oh, I do. My all right. goodness. Uh huh. I mean, I, we'll, we'll support you. Yeah. yeah. I'll have a bumper sticker. Yeah. Make sure you hide. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you don't yeah, want to. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna piss everybody off. <laughs> That's scary, dude. I, I know, know it Can is. Can you wait till we're like super, super successful yeah, before you like, decide to do something? Oh, I'm you? not thinking about doing anything. Yeah, because the chances of you being assassinated have got to be like a 50 50. Oh, yeah, for sure. Easily. I got such a big mouth. Someone's gonna want to. That'll be the goal, too. All right, I'm done. Someone yeah. tried to kill me. Go, right. Go out of the bank. No, but yeah, so that, that's something that I've thought about for a long time, but mainly it's just so I can say what I want to say in the right uh, in the right arena, I guess. But, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe I'll just do it through this, you know? Right. I don't know. Uh, so check this out. We have like 12 guides. They're totally free, and they're very valuable. They're really good. We have some guides on teaching how to train your legs, train your calves, work out your chest, how to do hit training properly, how to get a flat midsection, all these guides are available for free. All you got to do is go to mindpumpfree.com, download one, or download all of them. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.